Hey folks, good morning from the kitchen. Just a quick film for you today about reusing and recycling your bottles for your home brew. As you can see, I've got a selection of bottles here. I've got sparkling cider, sparkling wine, Prosecco, different beers. This is just a selection of some of the kinds of bottles that might have otherwise gone in the recycle bin, but you can reuse if you're doing homebrew, which is going to be carbonated or sparkling, such as beer, sparkling wine or cider. So the two different kinds of bottles I'm using are the 750ml bottles, which have had champagne style corks in the top with the cages that you undo. And then these, which are called flip top bottles, where you just press the metal to open the bottle. And these are commonly used by home brewers, and I use them um, in beers uh, and sparkling wines and ciders. The key problem with bottles like this is that the labels have become very difficult to get off, as the glue that's now used is a lot stronger than what it used to be. In days of old, you could just float bottles in water and the labels would float off. Now you need a bit more effort. So this kind of bottle's got two different labels. It's got a foil label and it's got um, a paper label. The foil label's easy enough to get off. So to remove the foil label, I'm just using a knife. I'm just cutting through the peels. And then there's a bit of a paper one which isn't fully stuck on. There we go. And that all comes off. So that was nice and easy. The trickier labels are the paper labels. And to remove those, I use something called HG Sticker Remover. And I just bought this from Amazon and I've already used it plenty of times and there's still lots left in the bottle. And all you do is simply paint it on with a small paintbrush, like so. Now you'll note that I've got my bottles on cardboard and that's for a reason. I don't want to spill this stuff anywhere. I don't want it dripping on my work surfaces and staining them. So just to demonstrate on the tube bottle. So I'm just dipping in here, take it out and then I paint on the label. It goes all over the label until the label's wet. I do the main label and again it goes all over the label until the label is wet. You've got to be patient with this, it's no good trying to slap it on otherwise you're going to make a mess. It's really strong smelling, it smells a bit like nail varnish remover. Acetone. It's probably highly flammable as well, so be careful. And I'm going to do this now for all of my other bottles. So that's the first coat done on all of my labels. It might need more than one coat. I'll have to wait and see. You need to leave it to soak in and see what happens. And you can see if you look at this Prosecco label, how it's gone grey. This was white before. It's gone grey as the liquid has soaked through the label. I'm just giving this one a second coat and you can see as I paint it with the brush how the label begins to disintegrate. So it really is quite uh, corrosive stuff. If you get it on your hands, do wash them. So a second coat now on all of them. Some labels will come off really nicely and easily after they've been coated. And some of them will take scraping and scraping with a sharp knife under a tap. So the glue on here then needs washing off under the tap. So a little bit of hot water, a little bit of soap and a scourer and just push it. That is now a clean Le Chouf bottle. Even with the D-label solution, you've still got to have a bit of elbow grease with this, so there's no getting away from that, so be prepared for it. Getting the glue from under the labels is the hardest bit. Some of them just won't come off at all, and it is down to brute force knife and then the scourer. We've got two of us at it at the minute. Using this stuff does make it a little bit easier than not having it, but still you're going to come across persistent ones like this one. 
and I've been going at it a while, I can tell you. So be prepared to burn some calories. Don't be afraid of a bit of hard work because ultimately it does pay off and it is worth doing this because you can keep reusing the bottles. Don't give them away to people though. In fact, if you're going to give any away, give them the plastic ones. So we've done loads of jars. It's took us an hour and a half to do all the bottles and jars that you can see in the dishwasher. Two of us. All these bottles down here as well. So I'm just going to stick them in the dishwasher to finish off the outsides. Just put it on an eco or short wash, but it'll just make them a bit nice and clean and tidy on the outside if there's any little bits of residual. And then when that's done, it's the insides. So this is the fruit of our labour. So absolutely beautiful bottles, which it's a, such a shame to throw something away like this. I mean, look at the stunning design of this. It's absolutely gorgeous. Nice little dumpy one, really heavy. Again, 750 mil. And then some smaller flip tops. Now, a lot of people do use plastic bottles that do homebrew, and that's, you know, that's down to individual choice. But I take a lot of pride in creating what goes in the bottle. So I want the bottle itself to represent that as well. I want the bottle to look good, and I want to have a, like, a bit of theatre, because it's nice when you pop a cork, isn't it? It's quite exciting. You don't know what you're going to get. You know, are you going to get a bottle bomb, or are you going to get a, a nice little pop, or is it going to be a damp squib, you know? But it's nice to do that. I enjoy that. And it's the same with flip tops. You know, there is a little bit of theatre involved in this. And that's why I'd rather recycle glass bottles this way than use the plastic ones. The outside of the bottles is now clean and I now need to make the inside of the bottles clean. And I just use a very little bit of no rinse sanitizer. There's many different brands available. Have a look online. Now it says no rinse and that genuinely means that you don't need to rinse these out. Once you've put the water in, you can pour it out and that's it. However, I've got a very keen nose and I can still smell a chemicaliness. So I still rinse them out, usually twice with hot water, just to be on the safe side. Once the sanitizer's in the bottle, I simply put them under the tap. One at a time. I'm using warm water. And here are the bottles now. They've got the sanitizer in and water and I'll leave them for an hour then I'll rinse them out twice and that'll be it they'll be good to go so I hope this has been some use to you please do consider recycling your glass bottles it is a bit labor intensive getting the labels off the stuff that I used that I showed you in the video does help but you've still got to put a bit of work into it as well I think the end result is worth it though I mean these genuinely are works of art they're absolutely beautiful and it's such a shame to see them thrown away. I get them from my wife, I get them from family, friends and our local micropub. So, you know, look around. There's loads out there. Okay, see you later folks. The film that you've just watched is a Moss Home and Garden production. You can find more by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk I'd just like to say thank you very much for supporting my YouTube channel and for watching my films. It really is very much appreciated. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to receive future updates about the home and garden films which I upload. You can find my YouTube channel by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. Please click on the red subscribe button. When you've done that, a little bell will appear. If you press that also, then you'll get future updates about the films which I upload. If you like my films, if you like my style of filming, then you might also like my travel channel, which you will find by going to youtube.com forward slash Stuart Moss or typing www.mosstravel.tv. Again, if you could subscribe to that channel, it would be hugely appreciated. If you'd like to get Moss Home and Garden updates on Facebook, then please open Facebook and do a search for Moss Home and Garden and you will find the page. If you like the page, then you will get future updates on there. 
and if you'd like to connect on Instagram for home, garden and travel photography as well as some stories then my username is stewmoss, S-T-U-M-O-S-S. If you'd like to connect on Twitter then my username is at Stuart Moss. And if you'd like to contact me about film usage or any other issue, please just email me on stewmosshomegarden at gmail.com. Once again, thank you very much for supporting my channel, for watching my films. I do appreciate it. I'd just like you all to have a great day.